also want to thank you for your help in working with our office to address challenges that your county faced uh, during the 2019 general election. And a few issues that have come up with Act 77 and how it will be implemented for this election. And one is with regard to the central scanning. Um, I'm hearing from local elections officials in York County who are concerned about how votes will be tabulated and cross-checked with absentee and mail-in ballots. You, you started to touch on it, but you know, in the past, those absentee ballots, they would be delivered to the precinct. The sign-in booklet would have that notation that the individual submitted an absentee ballot. So if that voter showed up, they had all the information there that they needed. Now the absentee ballots and the mail-in ballots are going to the central scanning location within the county. So the question is, how are we going to guarantee this will not lead to voter fraud, where a voter shows up at the poll, uh, casts, casts a ballot, and, and a voter also votes by absentee or mail-in ballot, voting twice? Um, how, how is this going to work, and how are we going to assure that there isn't fraud? So yeah, very excellent question, and thank you for all your partnership on, uh, you know, all the both pieces of legislation that we passed in the fall was just amazing. So and really helps. Um, so uh, I'm going to start, and then I'm going to ask you to fill in anything that I miss. Um, so the one of the things we actually just added to a new, to be deployed. I I want to make I and everybody in the counties. I want to make this as easy as possible to prevent the kind of thing that you're talking about. We you know Act 77 shift the. Um, shift the presumption so whereas it used to be that if a person was available even if they had voted absentee they had to go to the precinct now it's the opposite right so um, so what we're actually going to have in the poll book is that if somebody has submitted an absentee or mail-in ballot it's 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 not even going to allow the person to be able to sign there's not going to be a signature line in the poll book for them to sign they are going to be clearly identified and it's not going to be just like a watermark where it could accidentally get missed it's going to be i don't know if you know the actual description of what it's going to look like but i wanted it to be foolproof so that nobody could accidentally have that happen thinking like it used to be that you could go and do it. So do you want to describe so, what? And, and, and I get that, and, th and I think that's really good. But we all know that you can submit that absentee or um, mail-in ballot up until 8 o'clock that night at the polling place. Right. So, so how is that going to work? So you've got it on the front end. So if I submit a mail-in ballot, then it's, it's blocked off. There's no place for me to sign because you have my vote already. Uh, but what happens to the person who doesn't submit it until 8 o'clock that night or 7.59 p.m.? The, uh, the, the indicators in the poll book will be just as clear um, because those voters, uh, even the ones who haven't returned their ballot, um, those voters can only vote by provisional ballot. So there's absolutely no need to have a signature area in the poll book for those voters to sign because the only path... Uh, that they have as provisional so ballot. So once path. you mail it out to them. Yes, even even those, because what Act 77 requires is that if you have not returned your ballot, you can vote, but you can only vote by provisional ballot. So removing the temptation from the poll worker to allow them to sign. Now, I've learned over the years if somebody's hell bent on screwing up, they're going to find a way to do it. But I think, I think the way, I think the way that it's that it's laid out in the poll book is going to make it crystal clear. It'll make it easier to train poll workers so they'll know exactly what to look for, and they'll know that this is so unique from everything else that they need to do something different. Okay, great. So along the, those lines of the election changes, you talked a little bit about funding for the changes made under Act 77. Um, but what about the changes made under Act 94, right? The language that I added to Representative Gobbler's election code legislation. In York County, as you know, and, and we had this question a little bit earlier, concerns about uh, voters' privacy being compromised when submitting those ballots or marking those ballots. And we made very clear that the constitutional right to a private ballot must be assured. Um, and after hearing from local judges of elections in York County, um, I've been told that there's no directive to the counties from the department on how they should be implementing Act 94 and what they should expect on primary day. 
which of course, as we now know, is only about two months away. So um, what exactly does the department need to help the counties in the rollout of this new law so that they can accurately and effectively implement it on election day? Do you want to talk about the directive? Sure. I, um, so we're actually finalizing um, some additional directives regarding privacy. Um, we just met this morning with uh, with my staff uh, about that, uh, and, and we want to provide sort of foolproof um, guidance. Uh, guidance that actually shows. I mentioned earlier. I think a lot of this is polling place layout. Uh, and how you lay out the polling place. You know, if you have four people lined up next to each other and you have voters passing behind them. Uh, so we're trying to be very explicit in our guidance and give best practices. You know, every polling place is different. Uh, obviously, they're in different buildings, different locations. Uh, but we want to, so we, we are providing different um, sort of layouts uh, for polling places, so the counties have some best practices. If you know, if your room is a large rectangular room, here here's sort of what you can do, and providing them maps so that they can map it out when they're setting up the polling place in the days before the election. They can set it up a, in a way that uh, that um, you know accommodates privacy more more so than the the previous way they did it. You know, previously they could rely on the curtains around the voting system. So how they set up the polling place where things were located weren't as, in, weren't as important. Uh, now it's critically important they have it set up in, in a way that, that accommodates uh, and promotes privacy. So that's... And, and the counties can expect to receive those I, when? Probably in days. We're okay. literally finalizing that. And, and we want to make sure, too, that we're, what we're putting out there is something the counties can accomplish, uh, both in the short term and the long term, too. We don't want to... We, we don't want to be... Uh, you know, we don't want to set them up for failure by, by requiring a standard that they can't meet. Um, I appreciate that. And I know the you. chairman is ready to take my time back. Yes. I, I would just I'm like sorry. to say this. Um, you made comments with regard to uh, Senator Boscola's legislation. Senator Ward has the this, SIPACT. This pact. There are other compacts that are going to be very important for the implementation of telemedicine if we can get that uh, over the finish line. If there are problems with the FBI and background checks on other of these compacts that we currently have in the pipeline, can you please take a look at that and let us know so that we can address that? Sure.